Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. I'm not sure if I'm exactly in a reading slump, but a lot of other life things has been taking my time and my attention. So when I do have reading time, my mind is just so busy, I don't always have the interest to read. And so I guess it's also okay since the Nebula Award list has dropped and I typically start with short stories, I'm reading those short stories currently. But oh, that was a spoiler for my reading wrap-up. So the one novel I finished this month was my reread of Trading in Danger by Elizabeth Moon. This is about Kyla Arvada on her first mission as a trader captain. She was in the military academy and then was kicked out due to some pretty species circumstances. Most of it's optics. It's nothing that she personally messed up on. I mean, she acted in good faith. Her family are traders using spaceships. But there is this space, and so they have always wanted her to be in the family business, so they immediately get her a ship. Her job is supposed to go junk it, because it's not up to code, and it's not, it has parts that are failing. And she's given an experienced crew as she goes along. But what she doesn't know is most young Vada captains go off, to, off mission. They, the family motto is trade and profit. Kai is someone when she does something, she jumps in wholeheartedly. So she's now a trader. She doesn't really want to junk her ship. So she has a trade opportunity lands in her feet and she takes it, which sends her to another planetary system that then erupts into war. She then has to use her military training to make sure her and her crew survive, as well as be able to then go fulfill the contract of this other planet. And I really enjoyed it, just kind of watching the back-to-back. -back. Since I have read this whole series, I can definitely see how this book is a, can be a standalone. You could read this and not be worried about anything else in the series, but it does have hints of what is to come, and I really enjoyed that. And then I finished three short stories that were nominated for the Nebula. I the, fir the first one I finished was DIY by John Wiswell, and this one I just adored. The narrator is one part of a couple who are trying to solve the water crisis, but they start off talking about their partner Noah and Noah's desire to join this magical academy which plays into the rest of the story. And I like how the two of them come up with a solution, but due to their actions, the population as a whole uses their solution to a different end. And just kind of proof that knowledge is supposed to be shared no matter what. It's not supposed to be commoditized, or I think I just made that word up, or to always have a profit with things that are with things that are meant to help the majority of people. I then read A Rabbit Test by Samantha Mills and oh, working in public health, this one hit hard. This one deals with abortion, birth control, women's health, restricting women on what they can do with their bodies, all of it. And it's set in the future following Grace uh, um, as she's a teenager who first finds out she's pregnant and doesn't want the baby and then going on into her adulthood but it's also interspliced with historic people and his historic facts about birth control and abortion and family planning and when I say I work in public health I work in a health clinic while I work on um, in the WIC department when I first started there I asked I used to do week on week off in the family planning department and currently they're taking our services away for the family planning and giving it to another clinic in the 
in the neighborhood that they think would be a better fit for those type of services. And there's lots of emotions going on in, our, in my workplace. And, and then also with the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, this one is just timely, the conversation that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was one of those things I read and then I had to think a lot, long time about it. Definitely one I shared with my coworkers and I don't even know if all of them like science fiction, but I've had so many people come up to be me and be like, oh my gosh, that short story just hit me. So while this short story was published in a science fiction fantasy magazine, it, the implications are greater for it. And this is definitely one you can share with a wider audience. And then the last short story I read is Doin' by Suzanne Palumbo. And this is following Samantha, who is a young child who has recently died and really just wants her mom. That This is a story of her trying to get back to her mom and kind of figuring out what does it mean to be dead and not be at rest. So it's a very fun story. This one is written in like an island dialect. So when you first start reading it, you might try reading that loud to help you kind of find that rhythm, but don't be put off by it. So that is what I have finished this week. I continued reading Reaper by Elliot Pepper. Just slowly reading it. Definitely the plot is intensifying and I'm now 40% into it and I like that some characters they are talking about their how they feel like they can't act or they miss their chance and other characters are like I am I'm doing this even if it's treason so I'm enjoying the story I am also working on Monsters We Defy by Leslie Penelope just a little bit more into this one and as she is um, Clara is who can talk of his spirits is not trying to put together people to do a heist to get a ring for a spirit so that she will take away her trick. I have only read the first chapter of The Great Gatsby, talking to one of my coworkers. She also has this book, has not read it yet either, so we talked about Buddy reading it, and then I've only read the first chapter since we had that discussion. I kind of liked the beginning paragraphs where the narrator is talking about people just tell him things and confide in him and he's just like I, I don't want to know I've always called this like I have a sign that says tell me everything and you're like how do I get rid of the sign because I don't want it <laughs> you know just sometimes people don't have the empathy or the mental resources to hear everybody else's life stories but then the, the first chapter just kind of kept dragging and dragging and I was like well who are we following anyway and it took forever to find out that, oh, we're following Nick. Okay. I don't know. Hey, it hasn't caught me, but it's not a long book, so probably we'll just kind of continue with it. Then I'm still continuing with Crucible of Hell. I'm going to definitely be continuing with this and continuing with these. But I also hope in this next week to at least read the novelette that has been nominated for the Hugos in here. It is A Dream of Electric Mothers by Wally Talavi, and I'm going to continue the last two short stories that were nominated for the Nebulas, and then I hope to get into these novellas as well, since I only have them for a short period of time from the library. And that's kind of what I'm planning to read for this next week. Short stuff, continuing with things my mind doesn't want to settle. <laughs> for my writing wrap-up. This week I lived. That That is what we're going to do. I did decide this week that my Camp Nano project in April is going to be kind of plotting or outlining a contemporary Christian romance set in Chicago. And I know that it is going to be friends to lovers 
And so basically it's just sitting down, figuring out all the details about the book to then write it. I've never written a romance. In other stories I've had romantic elements, but never specifically a romance. So this will be interesting. And then for other media. My husband, I, and our daughter watched the rewatched Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I know a lot of people don't like the author of these series. That's not the purpose of our family time. And it was, so we're going to move past her and go back to, it was interesting watching the movie again. And especially because it makes me want to reread the books because there's so much information that the movie can only slightly convey. And it's a lot of it is context. Like in the movie, it'll do something. And I'm like, well, without knowing that this is why they did that, that doesn't necessarily make sense. And then we also, my husband and I watched Chamber of Secrets just ourselves. And the same thing, I feel like the movie had moments where, no, I think the movie had a lot of moments where it last, lost the context. Most especially at the beginning, it was like they were missing a scene where after the cake gets dumped on the guest's head, the next thing they go to is they're putting bars on the window, but you miss the context of them receiving a letter from the Ministry of Magic saying, hey, use magic again and you'll be kicked out of Hogwarts. So then they're like, oh, well, you can't magic your way out to go to school, so we're just not going to let you go to school. Also, I noticed in the second one, there was a lot of, I'm going to tell the audience what they have just seen because they're too stupid to figure it out. Kids aren't stupid, guys. Kids get it. You don't have to spell it out. Or I pick up the third movie today, so this will be interesting. And then I also got back into watching Death in Paradise, the new season. I like that they're really letting the side characters in the detective group shine more than the detective. Usually it, the stories follow the main detective, but now they're kind of letting other people come up. And something I just like about this show is like they've switched out the detective. They've switched out the side characters kind of showing movement happens and change happens in a workplace. And I like it. So that has been my week. And for announcements, I am going to be on Jen's bookshelf on Sunday, March 26th. I'm gonna put the link of the stream down below when I get it. And this is going to be a social productivity sprints. So we'll be talking and then we'll have some sprints. You can do writing, you can read, you can do housework, whatever, but just come talk, hang out with uh, different writers and readers. It's going to be fun. Jen's bookshelf is a hybrid booktube and author tube channel. And she is currently working towards publishing her own cozy fantasy for this year, which I'm excited to watch her journey. But then I also like hearing about the books that she's reading. A lot of them are books that I'm interested in. So it's nice to get to hear her perspective. And then that sometimes moves those books up in the ranking of what I want to get to read. So if you haven't checked out her channel yet, please go check out her channel. I, I don't think I have anything else coming up in the future. Oh, uh, and something else is in next week's video, I will also include my magical readathon TBR and my public health readathon TBR. So more information about those. I hope you guys are all having a great March and just had a great St. Patty's Day. Thank you and have a great day.